You're watching Palatinate TV. Hello everyone, I'm Martha. I'm one of the news editors for Palatina and these are the interviews for the 2021 SU elections. Uh, I have Jonah here who's running for the role of Welfare and Liberation Officer. Uh, Jonah, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Jonah Graham. I'm running for Welfare and Liberation of Officer. I'm a fourth year politics student from Van Milder. Hi. Um, so my first question for you is why did you decide to run for this role? I decided to run because I think 2021 is a call to action, essentially. You look around Durham and students are struggling and it's not their fault, they're very capable, but given the pandemic and the bigger picture of isolation, students are really struggling. So I was looking at this and I looked at myself and I think I have the experience to run. I'm an association president, I'm on the student support review panel, and I think I can be both a caring and compassionate person, but I can also bring tangible change through my experience and through policy. So that's why I'm running. Um, so you've sort of already answered this, but what relevant experience do you have and how do you think that will help you in the role? Um, so yes, I'm a finalist. Uh, I've made my home in Durham. I found my community, I found myself. And over the course of the four years, I've always tried to be quite caring. I've always tried to just make friendships and I've extended that into kind of proper experience. So I'm an association president. I'm on the report and support and um, so I'm on the student support review panel and also my year abroad I did quite a lot on sexual violence in panels so I just think I'm quite uniquely positioned and I know kind of by now how Durham works it's quite segmented you have the colleges you have the academic groups and I think with my experience I spent the last year really facilitating welfare working with the LGBT college reps my own welfare reps and talking to other people so I have those connections but I also know how welfare and liberation kind of work so I can really help the groups in the colleges in the JCRs in the associations. Um, so what would you do differently to your predecessor Ewan Swift? So I think Ewan's done a really good job given the circumstances. Uh, as a president Ewan supports the president, supports associations, I've always felt supported just on a personal level but um, I think Ewan's really focused on housing which is really important like live us out second years they're not really discussed I feel you move out and you're kind of not forgotten about but you're not really looked into so take time to sign you as campaigns done really well on housing done really well to show students here is here is your rights when signing a private contract I just want to have a different focus if I'm honest I want to focus on mental health it's my priority to make mental health a priority I think that needs to happen so I'm really going to focus on mental health and supporting students um, so you say you want to have a different focus. So um, I know that SU has historically supported the Rift Off, Ripped Off campaign. Uh, do you still plan to support the ends of that campaign if you're elected into the role? Uh, definitely. We need to make Durham as inclusive as possible. This includes monetary wise and with working class students. Durham, I think, can have a slight PR problem and, you know, just an image problem. We need to make Durham as inclusive as possible. I also want to continue Ewan's work, definitely. I know there are some girls that Ewan still wants to meet, like making, for instance, uh, private landlords. I know it's like a disconnected. Um, basically, give references to students to make sure they're not going to be ripped off. So I'll definitely be key. Uh, I think it's key to bring that work forward. Um, and where would you like to see the ripped off campaign or just a campaign in general for accommodation fees to go? Like, where? where what do you want to do with it? Um, I definitely think... And just, I think Ewan's approach is quite good in just publicising rights and knowledge. The student body, when they come to college or when they live in private accommodation, they need to know all the options available to them. I do think we should be looking at accommodation prices, especially if they're not rising with inflation. I need to do more research on that. I'll be honest, that's a job I'd happily do. And I would like to make sure just we have fair pricing, reasonable pricing and affordable pricing. Um, are you nightline trained? Um, I'm not, no, I need to get nightline trained. Uh, I can as association president. It's definitely, it's definitely something I need to do before taking on the role. But I will say I've worked with a lot of welfare teams. I've worked with my welfare team. I've worked with the LGBTS reps. And the job of welfare and liberation is not providing your own welfare space. It's going, okay, how can I support the groups that do this? And I do have that understanding. But yes, I completely agree. I'm going to get trained, I promise. <laughs> um, so what are the main things you'd like to do in the role to support student mental health and also to support college welfare throughout next year, especially if we're still in lockdown? OK, that's a really good question. It's something I'm really passionate about because I know when you're isolated, those little voices 
when you're on your own, get a lot louder. There's nagging voices of negative mental health. And I think there's kind of a two-step solution to this, which will tie into both your questions. Firstly, prevention. We need to give students kind of self-care, self-care tips so they understand just how to look after themselves, especially finest. It's a really stressful year. Students need to just know little things and be able to take time off for themselves and know, do you know what, that's okay. Secondly, I think most importantly, students need to know exactly where to turn to. They need to know all the pros and cons, and I'll do this for a signposting guide. They would need to know all the pros and cons of each individual resource. For example, if you live in college, but you know the college welfare officer, you might not feel comfortable going to the um, college welfare because you know them. If you live in college, you might be worried about being overheard by people next door in your room, say if you're trying to come out to someone over welfare. And also for minority support, we need to look at the counselling service to hire minority specialists and train the welfare reps in JCRs and in the associations to have specialist training. So if someone's disclosing racism or ableism, they're able to um, properly help this, help this person. And then just to support the welfare teams doing this, we need to help people. But we also need to support because it's a lot to be a welfare. You know, it's a burden, but it's something that I really admire in people and we need to help them. So this is essentially just making sure their job is safe as possible online. So just online best practice is giving them streamlined access to their own mental health resources. Should they need them? It's doing monthly check-ins so I can make sure that their priorities are being met. And I think training is key. So definitely, I think we need to expand nightline training, not just to cover the um, anonymous call-ins. We need to, I've been talking to quite a few reps and there's a common feeling that we should expand it just a little bit more on person to person, either online or in person, face to face disclosures and dealing with those. So that is what I would do. Um, so do you think that the university and the colleges are doing enough to support student mental health this year? Uh, yes, I do. I mean, I, I cannot, I'm going to separate the question slightly. In regards to the um, Students, definitely. Students work tirelessly to help each other. I've spoken to the welfare reps, I've spoken to my own teams. And part of the best thing about Durham is how good and how just compassionate the student reps are, the welfare reps. Like in college, they're not being paid, they're volunteers. So I think they're doing absolutely enough. And my job would be just helping them reach as many people as possible, also supporting them. The university, it's something I really want to look into. I don't want to give you a definitive answer now because I need to do the research. I've tried to talk to welfare groups about counselling and I've actually struggled to kind of go, okay, how do students really feel about the counselling service, if I'm being honest? I've got in scheduled in the meeting to talk to the one of the co-heads of the counselling service to talk about how they receive feedback. A common trend I've found is people aren't happy with the six slots. They would like more because it kind of feels like you have your six slots and then you're done, you have to leave. So I want to look into that. On the university side, I think I would like to kind of do, kind of try and speak to people who've been through the counselling service. Obviously, I'd have to think it's through because anonymity is really important. And also just get the student view of going, okay, do more students need to receive the help and what's stopping them? Um. So what, concrete like specific changes would you like to see the uni or even the SU make to mental health services next year? Um, definitely as I said my, um, essentially my biggest one is expanding nightline, nightline training It's oversubscribed every time it's hard to get into and also we need to as I said support for minorities and support for marginalized communities within training for the welfare groups but also as well in the JCRs, I want active bystander training. This is essentially a way of teaching students to call each other out, to call out misconduct, to say, do you know what, your behavior is not okay in this moment. I I believe as a friend, if your friend is acting uh, sexist, misogynist, homophobic, transphobic, racist, et cetera, you have a duty to say, listen, your behavior is not tolerable. We won't tolerate this. So I want to look at getting proper active bystander training within each JCR. And I would like eventually to have a system with alongside consent matters, every student does active bystander training. I don't think I can do all of this in one year. This will be about laying the found foundations that we picked up later. Um, so how would you ensure that uh, minority students from various backgrounds aren't marginalised from various spaces in Durham? Um, so this is the third point of my manifesto. I really want to make sure minority voices are heard. 
I think the best way to do this is raise the voice of said minorities. I I don't have the lived in experience that some minority or marginalized communities will. So we should look to the student leaders who are already doing the work. So we should look to the associations and the societies that do this. I would essentially want to help those student leaders. Um, so I would do this essentially by giving a contacts list to facilitate, for t- to facilitate change in Durham, it's quite difficult because you have to get it on every single college, which can take a long time or every single academic group. So this would just be a list of JCR presidents, um, college principals, association presidents, just so people know who to contact to, facilitate, to get that change done. Then also I want monthly meetings with the association president so I can help them as much as possible. And also it's a bit fluffy. I just kind of do social media takeovers where I would essentially give my platform once a week or once every other week to a different group where they can share their campaigns or they can share their socials or whatever they're doing. I'd also finally really like to work on the culture commission. The recommendations should come out by the end of this year. I want to read them and see what we can do to bring those forward. So that. I think I really want minorities just to be heard in Durham, it's their space too. Um, so I know uh, various members of SU Assembly have attempted to like get a list of like the members of Assembly on the SU website and the SU have cited problems with like GDPR. So is that something that you'd support? Um, well, we recently had a vote on this in Assembly. Uh, and, yeah, and I kind of said it then and I'll say it now. I think transparency is really good. I think when we look at the issue, a lot of students, there's a disconnect. They don't know who's responsible for what. Well, what are the staff doing? What are the office do, officers doing? And there's a real problem. Like you can see the wrong campaign. There's this big disconnect in Durham. And I think this would be an important step. But it needs to come with a caveat, I think, mostly of any minority reps within the um, assembly. Essentially, if, as like myself, an LGBT plus um, president, I'm a voting member. If a student, say, isn't out at home, uh, as disabled, as gay, as trans, et cetera, we need to make sure that we're not outing them. So I would kind of like an opt-out system where if you're a minority, you're able just to have your title. It can just be your title of your role. Um, But for other reps, I think it's really important. So yeah, I would be in favor with the caveat, we need to make sure that minorities are being protected at the same time. Um, So you mentioned the wrong campaign and you mentioned like distrust in the SU and obviously there's been a lot of controversy this year with the SU. Um, So I'm just interested, what role do you see the SU playing next year um, in relation to all the controversy and the wrong campaign? I mean, (laughs) the SU and controversy, it keeps you seems to keep happening so I think the democracy review is a good step but we need to look at why is there disconnect why is this disconnect I can't give you all the answers I can't but I'll try and answer your question the way I see the SU is a platform for every student to see the change that they want in Durham that's how I view the SU I don't think it's perfect but if I can become an officer it gives me the levers of power that I can make minor, make minorities heard I can make the campus safer and I can make mental health priority so I think the issue is a tool for students to use, but we need to make sure that's transparent at the same time. So I think the role of the issue would change depending on who's, who, who offices are. Um, do you think the SU has done enough this year to be completely transparent and to kind of inspire trust in students? Um, I think the democracy reviews are a really good start, but it's, it's research, which is gr- brilliant, but it's gonna be a while till those policies are implemented. So I think we're gonna, to answer that question, I think it's a little premature to answer it. I would like to wait a year when when um, we can start really implementing what students said in the review that they wanted. For instance, I know one example is more direct democracy. So we can take the decision-making and give it to students. When stuff like that is being implemented, then I think I'll be able to kind of answer your question. I think we've taken the first steps, the current SU officers, and it's for us, if anyone who's elected, to kind of carry them further, especially the opportunities officer. Um, lastly, why should people vote for you? Um, okay, I think people should vote for me because, uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, I'm really quite caring. I've always prided myself, it sounds really cheesy, but I'm kind of the mother of my friendship group, that if people have problems, they come to me. And I've really tried to use that to help other people throughout Durham, which means I really have the experience. As I said, I'm an association president. 
I know how liberation groups, I know how welfare, pretty good handling on how it works. Obviously I can learn more, but I have the experience, which means I have the policies too. I've given quite a few concrete examples throughout. And I really think, especially if you're talking like something, something like sexual assault, you need to know how the report and support tool works. You need to work, know what can be done for survivors, but also active bystander training, how that can be implemented to prevent it. So I think I'm caring, yes, it's something I really pride myself on, but I have the experience and the policy to being really tangible change, which is something you need to have. So that's why you should vote for me, for Welfare and Liberation Officer. Uh, thank you. That's all the questions I have for you. Uh, thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you very much.